um, what we are going to be sharing with you is we're talking about God calling you. And I'm going to be talking about God calling you deeper into his presence. And she's going to be talking about God calling you um, to walk out on the water. And this is coming from a prophecy. So as a church in um, August, we did a time of set aside for prayer and fasting and seeking God. And I was leading the morning services. And while we were leading that, um, I was praying, and as I was praying, I saw a person walking into the ocean, and they had like on the old-fashioned like metal diving helmet, and they kept walking deeper and deeper and deeper into the depths of the ocean, and God said, I'm calling you into the deep. Come deeper and deeper into my presence. And as he was saying this, the person in the vision was walking deeper and deeper and deeper into the ocean until they got into the very deepest part. And then God laughed and he said, you don't need a helmet in the depths of all my encompassing love. Just breathe me in, breathe in my presence and experience it to the fullest. And he said this, the person pulled off the helmet and dropped it onto the ocean floor. And then they were laughing in awe and wonderment as they looked around at the beauty surrounding them and the amazing things that they could explore in the depths of the ocean. They were at peace and rest, just floating and swimming there in the depths of the ocean. And then God said, spending time in the depths of my presence and love is what enables and empowers you to answer my call to walk upon the water. And when he said this, the person was transported to stand on top of the ocean water. And Jesus was there and he held out his hand and he said, come. And the person then walked on the rolling ocean waves to take Jesus's hand and follow him. So we want to explore that concept a little bit more today. I am going to be talking about God is calling you deeper into his presence and what kind of happens when he calls us deeper into his presence. And then Lorian is going to share about how he's calling us to walk on water. And I think the most amazing thing about God is that God does, want, does not want to be unknown. He does not want to be far off. Our God is a God of relationship and intimacy. God's greatest desire is for you to know him as well as he knows you. Your very creator wants you to know the depths of him as much as he knows you. Micah 7, 19 and 20 says, Once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. You will show us your faithfulness and unfailing love if you, as you promised to our ancestors, Abraham and Jacob, long ago. And this was a prophesied promise that God fulfilled when Jesus died um, with our sins on the cross. The moment Jesus died on the cross, all of our sins were thrown into the ocean, like it says in that verse. And that ocean is an ocean of his love. His love encompassed all of our sin and took it all and just got rid of it. And I like to work with kids, and I work with kids a lot, and they like to experiment. So if you've ever seen water and you've thrown something into a, a big thing of water, like if you throw a little bit of dirt into water, it just kind of dissipates and goes away. And that's what happened to our sin. God threw our sin into the vast ocean of his love, and it just completely dissipated and was completely gone forevermore. And we connect with this in faith when we do water baptism. It's one of the reasons why we get water baptized. We purposely go down into the depths of the water, into the depths of God's love and presence. And when we're down there, we're dying to self and becoming a new creation in Christ by faith and being raised up into that transformation. So when we go into the deep with God, the same thing happens. When we spend time in his presence, when we spend time in his love, there is a dying that happens. Happens and we are transformed in his presence. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with an awareness of the glory of God. This is God's promise to us. One of his greatest desires, and it is going to happen. One day, the whole earth will be filled with the presence of God. It will be filled with the glory of God. It will cover the whole earth just as the waters cover the whole sea. The amazing thing, though, is we get to enter into that promise today. 
we get to enter into that promise right now. Because we're in Jesus and we're seated at the right hand of the Father, we are in his very presence and his very presence is inside of us. All we have to do is connect with him and connect with that presence. And it's like the person walking out into the water. It's purposely stepping into the presence of God. It's purposely choosing to step in and experience his love and his presence because he's always with us no matter where we go and no matter what we're doing. Psalm 139, 7 through 10 tells us that. It says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Jesus promised us that he would not leave us alone, but we would have his Holy Spirit living in us. Like the waters of the ocean fills it, you cannot escape it. Once you're in the ocean, you are in the waters and you can't escape them unless you get out. The presence of God is in us and it fills us. We cannot escape it. It is always with us. The presence of God is with us wherever we go. We are surrounded by his presence and his love. What we want to do is we want to choose to purposely connect with the presence of God because he's always with us and be aware that he is always with us and his presence is surrounding us. Romans 8:31 says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then verse 35 says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? The answer is no. Verse 38 and 39 says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that was revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. All of that is a fancy way of saying that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Our troubles here on earth can't separate us from God. Physical things can't separate us from God. Our emotional issues can't separate us from God's love. And then if that wasn't enough, nothing on our part can do it. God also says nothing in the spirit realm can do it either. Not angels, not demons, not spiritual powers, not anything that was ever created in all eternity can ever separate us from the love of God. God's love and presence is with us forever. For all eternity, we are joined with Jesus, and we have his presence and his love surrounding us. Nothing can ever separate us from that. So now that we know that God's presence and the depths of his love is with us all the time, when we purposely connect with that, when we go deeper and we spend time with him, some things happen. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 10, it gives us some ideas, some clues as to what happens when we go into the depths of God and spend time with him. Verse 9 says, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. That's Isaiah 64, 4 being quoted. And then in verse 10, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. And I love these two verses because they contrast the Old Testament and the Old Covenant and the New Covenant that we are under. In the Old Covenant, a vast majority of people could not know the mind of Christ. They had to have prophets and leaders that told them what God was doing and what he was thinking but we're in the new covenant. When we were joined with Jesus, something changed. It's that big word up there. It says, but now, right? So something, it lets you know something has changed. And what changed was we are now joined with Jesus and his Holy Spirit is in us. So in the new covenant, 
God does reveal what he's thinking. He does reveal his character. He reveals his thoughts. He reveals his actions, what he wants to do with us. And his very Holy Spirit teaches us the deep secrets of God so that we can know him more, so that we can know his very heart and the deep things of God. The more time we purposely spend in the presence of God, the more time we spend pursuing him and going deeper and pursuing knowing who God is, we are revealed, the Holy Spirit reveals those deep secrets to us and leads us and guides us into knowing God more. Just like in my vision, the person was in wonder with all the hidden beauty in the ocean steps. When we spend time in God's presence and he reveals himself to us, he reveals his thoughts, he reveals his characters, he reveals how much he loves us, we are in awe of all those discoveries that we can make in the deep with God, in the depths of his love. Ephesians 3:12 and then 16 through 19 says, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to, fully, to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And I love this verse because it gives us some more clues to what happens when we purposely spend time with God, when we purposely enter into his presence and seek after him. It says, one, that God's love makes us stronger in our faith because it's not some religion that we are called to. We are not called to some rules that are trying to conform us into something. We are called to a relationship with the almighty God. We are called into the depths of God's love, not just to read about him, but to experience him personally. It's not a religion that we are being called to. It is a relationship that we are being called to. And when we know that it's not some relationship, but this is a person, God is a, a person that wants to know me and wants to be known by me then when we know that, it builds our faith and makes us stronger in our faith because I know that he loves me and I love him, and that is formed in the depths of his presence. As we spend time with God our Father, he reveals his character. That's what we read just a little bit earlier, his depth to us, and then we're transformed to be more like him. We go stronger as people of character rooted in the love of God. When you spend time with God, you fall so in love with him. When his love is poured out, with you, poured out on you, you can't help but fall in love with him more. And when you fall in love with somebody, you want to please them. You want to do things that make them happy. And so when you spend time in the depths of God's love, your character starts changing. Not because somebody's implying some rules on you and saying, you have to do this or you have to do that. It's, I love you. How can I be more... Um, pleasing to you. Oh, I can change my character? That's what I want to do. And so our character is changed in the depths of God's love when we spend time with him. God is continually revealing the depths of his great love for us. And what's amazing is not only is he showing us those deep secrets of himself and revealing himself to us, but he's letting us experience it. I love that that verse says he wants us to experience his love because it's nice reading about it in the Bible, but it becomes more real when you experience his love for yourself and you can understand it fully. The Bible tells us when we experience his love, we can understand it more fully. We begin to understand that height, that depth of his love for us. And it, it's that understanding of the depths of God's love that strengthens us and empowers us to walk on the water when God calls us to. Because we can't do it in our own strength. It only comes from spending time in the depths of God's love and his presence. And it only happens when we're seeing and experiencing those depths of God's love for ourselves and being transformed to be more like him. 
if God's love is surrounding us and his presence is empowering us, then we can go out into the world and live with purpose and destiny like he's calling us to do. So another thing that happens in the depths of God's love is we experience peace and rest. And um, Moses knew this. He knew that he was being called to do something that he could not do on his own. He was leading a whole bunch of Israelite people. And um, he knew, like, this is not something I can do on my own. So he knew something smart that Moses knew was that I can't do this without God going with me. And so he said to God, um, that he wanted him to go with him. And we're in the new covenant. We have God inside with us, traveling with us all the time. But Moses did not. He had God physically going with him. So in Exodus 30, 14 through 17, the God, God replies to Moses' request. And the Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by name. The presence of God with us, in us, traveling with us, brings us peace and rest. And knowing that this world is just a crazy place. Everybody can look out and say, things are crazy out there. But we find peace and rest by God's presence, by knowing that his presence is with us all the time, going with us, no matter where we are, we are surrounded by God's faithful love. And we are in the world but we are set apart from it by the presence of God being in us. It says he looks with favor on us. And that means that God's going to make things work out for us. He's protecting us, enabling us to walk on the water when he calls us. And that knowledge brings us peace and rest when we spend time in his presence. And our last verse, something that happens when we spend time with God is we produce good fruit. John 15:5. And then verse 9 says, Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I remain in them, will produce much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. I have loved you, even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. This is one of the last things that Jesus taught his disciples. He said, It's very important to remain in me and remain in my love, because in me, you produce good fruit. Outside of me, you don't produce anything. And so we can produce great fruit in the world, but we can only do that by purposely staying connected to the presence of God and his love that is in us. And by choosing to spend time and connect with God and his presence, by diving deep into the depths of God and his encompassing love to find out more about him in his presence. And then when he calls us to walk on the water with him, we are able because we are connected to him, walking hand in hand to do those amazing things. And we're going to produce good fruit. And my daughter, Lorian, is coming on up. And she is going to talk with you about that, about the things that happen in the depths that allow us to walk on water with God.